to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Bing bong bong jun ho bong bing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> ah, James, classic oh, Oscars. You know I love the way that this is going, right? Oof. And anyone who's seen the show before knows that I am <laughs> very into the way things are going now. Man. And we're talking about what, Ross? The Oscars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The American Oscars, right? It is all gone to Asia now. It is all <laughs> over. Good night, everyone. Uh, no if one's you, really. If you if you ever had a question of who was paying for movies and where where all the money's coming from now and and who's making the money in the box office, you just got your answer last night. So much just disregard. <laughs> now, sorry, I'm not talking about this, but throughout the whole Oscars, yeah. A blatant disregard for the tradition and the the majesty, right? Yeah. Because it is very, it's like a pageant, right? Where it's very, there's traditions, there's yes. categories yes. for a reason. Yep. And even with all the like gender everything, mm-hmm. we still have, in the beautiful Oscars, we still have best actress, right? Ooh, don't say actress. Yeah. We're actors. Yeah. We still have that right because it's steeped in tradition. Yeah. And now I am confused and I'll tell you why. Uh, by the way, th- we're talking about the movie Parasite winning everything last night. Look, if you don't know that, best change picture, the channel. Best but picture, yeah. best, best director. screenplay, best director, mm-hmm. and best foreign film. Which, why do we have a huh, category huh, 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 called huh. foreign so, film? So, right. And so now I'm just wondering is that category out the window or like what is happening? I don't know. Um, you know, look, we gave our predictions, and the 1917, by the way, had swept not only the Golden Globes, but the BAFTAs, every award show possible best director, best picture, everything. Because if you're following the rules, that is what it would be. Yeah. But if you want to go outside. Yeah. Go outside the marriage. This is a movie that is in all subtitles. Uh-huh. And. And was shot where? Overseas. Ah. Uh. Yeah. In Asia. Okay. In so Asia. it was shot there. Yep. So it's a foreign film. All Asian actors. And the language they're speaking is. I, I believe it's Korean. And that's foreign. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's definitely not American. Definitely not American. Um, I think that's that's it. I think we're we're all done here, Oscar wise. Oh, all right, I'll go. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I mean for the awards, the award show, the the whole thing. Um, you know, you had no host again last night. I mean, they kind of teased us with some hosts, right? And yeah, I mean, well, Chris Rock and. Yeah, and Steve Martin, but you know they came out and did two, three minute monologue or whatever if it was. That, right? If that, yeah, yeah. I, and then the rest of it was just um, announcers, uh, announcers announcing each other, which I thought was an interesting way. Odd. So, like, one announcer would come out to announce mm. the announcer. That was fun, huh? Yeah, it was a fun thing. Yeah, so then you get like a double. So you have no hosts, uh-huh. uh, and then all of your. Best picture, your best picture category went to a foreign film that won for foreign film. And look, I heard it's amazing. So I heard it's amazing. I, I'm but that doesn't to see mean, it. I mean, how amazing do you have to be that you cross over? And like, that would be like an actress being so good that they give her best actor. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they put her in the category with the guys, right? That's what it feels like a little bit. Yeah. It's like, I know it was so good, mm. but then have it win right. for the category. Just going to like drop down to the ground. I, I like it. 
Look, whatever happens on the show happens on the show. It's live. It's live, just okay, like guys? Just like the Oscars. Just like the Oscars. And this is what we give you. Subscribe on YouTube, Drinking Bros Podcast. Um, we're giving you all the yeah, shows there. We're giving you all way. the business. You see Jesse tried to work uh, on a microphone. Um, keep going with it. I'll keep, I'll keep speaking. Uh, probably another one. I would probably say one of those other knobs, Jabes. Um, now. I don't think, I don't think you can... You can have the Oscars anymore with this in it because then you're that's, this opens the floodgates for every other movie, and then they're going to say, "Why wasn't my movie m- movie nominated from another country?" Gosh, I mean, you have to narrow it down, right? You have to. Not anymore. Not anymore. No. We are no longer. And then here's here's another telltale: American Factory won. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't even in, in that I told movie you, by the way i know you did the obamas um even in that movie they weren't um worried it, it wasn't a, a comment about being worried about asia moving into ohio and taking over mm-hmm. it was very hopeful and so n- nowhere was there any like no one's talking about how it's a little scary yeah no one yeah even in the best the, the documentary where we ex- the on, the last bastion of ex- you know exposing stuff like this mm-hmm. even that one they're like gosh mm, sorry you know oh isn't this great and we're melding two two cultures together yeah. yeah watch that movie it's fucking scary and then the rest of it oscar wise like be pit dude Huge B of Pitt fans. Brad Pitt. Huge. Um, it was I, so the pit I, I, that, that That category comes up first. And I told you, I was like, hey, get ready because that, that supporting ad- actor category comes up first and it comes, it sneaks up on you. And you're like, oh shit. Oh, we're, we're it was starting. out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And I think it surprised him too. He was very, oh, it was a big moment. You're the first one to go up. So we found out over the weekend that he hired a firm to write his speeches. For and what did other. I say? Good for yeah, you. Yeah, good for you, right? You should do. Which, because he, he was very well rehearsed in last night's speech too. Look, especially if this. And then is he went anti-Trump. Moment. What? I know. And then he he went very obscure, anti-Trump, and it felt like, oh, it was such a fucking letdown. He has never. It was won. about the impeachment. Yeah. And it was an obscure reference, right? You were like, it was it about was Bolton not testifying. Bolton not testifying, and you're just kind of like, what? What and as he's you know here's the thing it's like as they're walking up you're just like oh my god like yeah, yeah. this is their moment you know like yep. he has been in our fucking face and in our entire lives right for Brad Pitt he's just, Brad Pitt forty years that name thirty years yes thirty years yeah. has just been like on the tip of everyone's tongue no matter what if you're no matter what you're talking about yep and we just thought oh my god like finally you know and he really handled it he got speeches written for him good for him he's really taking the moment he's seizing it yep and he got up there and that was the first thing he said and i just thought god damn it that's what you wanted to say on this moment of like that you've been waiting for and working hard for your entire life your mm-hmm. entire career mm-hmm. right that's what you wanted to say it was so sad to i know me. um and there's an awesome meme going around that I never, it was, it's a perfect way of putting it, which I never did, but it was like somebody handing an actor an Oscar and it's like, here's your award for best acting. And the guy grabs the Oscar and is like, oh my gosh, people must want to hear what I have to say about the world. And they're like, no, 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 nope, just <laughs> acting. This is your award for acting. Oh, great. Now I can say, no, 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 no. Um, just acting. That's what you got the award for. We'll go into Walking Phoenix later. I'm sure yeah. you have some stuff to say about that. Boy. But um, cows are being raped. Yeah, I don't know. It felt uh, not people didn't go too political for the most part, right? Did they? Yeah, on there the was, carpet there was a, they did. There was about four speeches, four or five speeches that were political. That were political, um, but for different reasons. And uh, again, not the time or the place for it, in my opinion. Um, Brad Pitt, in particular, I, like I like what you just said of like that. You work your entire life for that, right? For an Oscar, you give to give an Oscar speech. This is your one moment. This to will practice be played in the mirror forever, forever, over and over and over again. And, and people are going to be like, oh, "Oh, yeah." You God. talked about the impeachment. God, sentence one, you guys. It was literally the first thing that you yes. said. It was like, "Thank you." Ba 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 ba. I didn't even really hear it, but he just went on a political thing, but really quick, and he sounded nervous, so it wasn't really confident. 
So it just it fell totally flat for me, and it really set the tone. It was the first award As of the they night. They do. It's the first award. No you reason for you're Brad be, Pitt. You've had an amazing fuck, career. Yeah, like be pimpy. You've been joking around and being awesome. And every other for show, every other show, yeah. the SAG. You're yeah. gonna save that that for the Oscars. <laughs> Give it to the SAG audience. They'll be with you. Yeah. Right? Strange. Nobody's watching that. Well, the, the thing is this. I think you, you can't give that speech before because then the voters might not vote you in for, you know, well, I don't know. Joaquin so you're Phoenix saying or, he's wanting to be, he's wanted to say that the whole I time. I think so. It, and as odd as that sounds, I think so. How sad. Um, yeah. How sad. Yeah. And then, you know. Go back to Champion Galleries. It's more in your fucking lane, I think. You rich ass motherfucker. It's crazy. Pitissance. Pitissance is over in it's my over mind. Now. It's over. It's over. I thought, I really thought it was his time. Yeah. Now, now the time is over. And you know what? Maybe he didn't, maybe he said the speeches were going so good. Maybe he said, you know what? I'm going to take this one. And the guy's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Let me write you something. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm done. I I'm think good. I'm going to cut you off the payroll. I've got this, dude. People are loving it. Yeah. And he just fucking biffed. And the guy was like, it was stuck with me, bro. It was such a snooze fest last night that mm-hmm. I don't even. I, and even Homeboy obviously had to have a translator. He doesn't speak a lick of English. So the translator's getting a lot of love today. Like, oh, mm-hmm. she was really hilarious. Cool, man. Because he, we don't understand what the fuck you're saying. Do you understand um, how translators work? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Did they just think that she got like the gist of it and put her own flair? That's what they're saying. Oh, God. So they're saying, because you and I talked about this on another show where he ran the worst campaign season of all time. Bong Joon? Yeah. Okay. Wanted to get out of there, said numerous times, I'm so tired of doing this. I just want to make movies. When can this please stop? And I think because nobody knew what the fuck he was saying. He's not wrong. So this little translator's been with him for all of this shit sure. and last night it it was mentioned that maybe she's taking his words and then softening it up a little bit ah uh-huh. um because she knows of like hey man there's okay. a way to come across and that's probably not it oh i get it okay and, yeah 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 and yeah and so yeah. she got a lot, of, a lot of love last night of like she was so, so kind and hilarious and it was just like eh. Maybe she's taking every other word of what he's saying sure. and just remixing it or maybe it. she really is putting her own flair on it maybe uh, either way, people loved her. Maybe she was he's trending. like death to America. Uh, yeah. And she's like, thank you so much for the award. Uh, it just The whole thing was uncomfortable last night. And um, I, again, I don't know where you go from here. They had this uh, c- collection or mixtape of best Oscar songs, winners over the years, you know? And then at the end of it, Eminem came out and sang... You know, the theme song from 8 Mile. I'm so mixed on this, I have to say. Um, Because at the time, I'm just like, what's happening? (sighs) But I really loved, I have to say, I really loved how it melded in. And, like, if he had done really well, it would have been fucking amazing, right? Yeah. Because it, like, it went so perfectly into it. And it was, like, a surprise. And it was great. Mm -hmm. And he did win for best song 18 fucking years ago. Can you believe that? And he didn't show up that And night. he didn't show up. Yeah. So his tweet was actually really good. Where yeah. he was like, I'm sorry, it took me 18 years to get this, but I grabbed the moment and I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah, yeah. he had a backing track and I'm not sure why, but like, I don't know. It wasn't, right? It was strange because, kind of, uh, well, here's the thing. First of all, the mic was low. Low in the beginning, wasn't really you working and then him. it cut in and then he wasn't exactly on the beat, but I didn't know if it was on purpose and then he had a backing track so he wasn't singing quite every word. Every other word and then he was overweight. Overweight in a weird way though. Um, just right in the belly only. Like he looked fine everywhere else, but then yeah. like it was strange. Uh, and I'd then he had these skinny like jeans on before. that were below his ass with the boxers and I was like, Man, you never dressed like that before. But look, how old is he? The beard is, I don't know why he has a beard at this point. He's 47. Oh my God. Well, hey. I, that's what I'm saying. Look. But for 47, like, hey man, he was dressed like he was at Hot Topic and he was going sure. to, skate, to the skate park later. He you know. could have, dude, if he had done like a different rendition of it. Do you remember when he or, won? What if he came out and like, here's what I thought last night. What if he came out and talks? Talks. You grabbed everybody the else, moment. Everybody else came out dressed up. Seize the moment. Yeah. Everyone's dressed up, Everyone. except for Billie Eilish. You fucking stay home. I'm, 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 I'm all done with Billie Eilish. I'm too, done like with Billie Eilish. Night. Yeah. And I'm a boomer, and I'm fucking okay with it. 
I, I, look, look, I don't, I don't consider okay myself it. a fucking boomer. I I'm am just... okay with if that means that I am pissed off at Billie Eilish for everything last night, then I'm a boomer. No. I'm fine with it. I'm not. I'll, I'll tell you what I was pissed off about Billie Eilish last night. It was a, a, a kid who didn't understand anything and just gave like snotty looks the whole night of like, mm-hmm. what is this fucking shit? And That's it's like, I mean. hey, man, if you don't... If you don't know Eminem's song from Eight Mile, I don't give a fuck what age you are at this point. Like she has to know. She got you gotta go to me, where it's just like, dude, you've gotta know that fucking song. And like she was giving snotty looks looking at, at that, and it was like, Hey man, we all know that song. That's one of the most famous songs of all time. It is still on every fucking mixtape ever for Absolutely. any workout of all time. Like the mom spaghetti meme has been going on forever. Unless she just thought mom Sp- spaghetti was a fucking meme. And, Maybe. and really never heard and was the just music. Laughing at that, um, it, was, it won a fucking Oscar. Like, you know. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, wouldn't it be great? Do you remember when he did win and they were doing the band underneath or whatever was playing Eight Mile? Yeah. Like orchestra. What if he did something like that? Like that would have been fucking cool. Yeah, and a tuxedo. Like, tuxedo. It like, rad. It I don't rad. know. Um, I think it missed a little bit, but at the same time. I did like that whole same and like I look thing. I was nostalgic for because I love that song and that movie obviously and when he came out I was just, I was ready to be amped to shit and be like all right man he's gonna Fuck, kill this performance yeah, it didn't they fucked him with that mic sitch though the mic if was they had turned him up a little bit so he could be over that backing track yeah I think it might have been good and I think a lot of the looks you got from the audience because they were like oh the looks from the audience seemed like they were confused it wasn't like it wasn't they were confused they were wondering why the fucking sound was out and why it was so low and why they couldn't turn that up mm-hmm. uh, in his mic but then when he stopped singing and he was out of breath and the backing track kicked in you could hear how loud that backing track was mm-hmm. when every other person had come out and sing you know sang earlier mm-hmm. it was uh it sucked, man. I just, I felt bad for him. And yeah. But in that montage, like, I did, like. So did I. You know, like, uh, Reservoir Dot, where you go, like, oh, my God, songs that yeah, actually yeah. do completely now make you think of a movie. Mm-hmm. So every time you hear that song, like, from Reservoir Dogs, where he's dancing about to cut the ear off, like, you always think about that movie. It was a song before. Yep. But the movie, you know? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really good. Uh, why was Black China there? I don't know. Walking the red carpet. That's another tweet that's nope. going around. No Why? idea. No idea. Um, you're in a bigger theater now. Like Kodak so is a. Just fill it with whoever. Kind of. I mean, you're uh, Kodak's a pretty big theater inside. I want to say it holds about five thousand. You know, you look at all the the awards and families and all that other stuff. You probably have another three thousand seats to fill. So, like, you know, it usually okay. goes to movie executives and shit like that. But I mean, yeah, maybe more people get more guests to bring with them. Maybe family can come. No, Black China's yeah, there. Yeah, walking the red carpet. Strange, man. Strange. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix speech. Strange. Um, I don't. I challenge you to go back and watch that and try to understand what it is he's talking. About. It, it was about vegan being a vegan. Oh, he's how, very passionate about that. I will give him that. Great. Um, wrong place to do sh- it. But these, yeah. uh, when he said, because this was an exact quote, you know, we're artificially inseminating all these cows and then taking the newborn cows from their mother when you can still hear their cries and screams. And you were just like, I mean, whoa, what are we talking about now? Um, he's not, had nothing to do with acting. Not wrong. Nothing but. to do with Oscars, nothing sure. to do with anything like Sure. You can make that speech, you know, just a video and pop it up on your Instagram. Um Right. Nothing to do with playing the Joker? No. Nothing to do with, uh, Todd Phillips wasn't Did mentioned. Men- no one. No? Nothing about the movie. Ooh. Only about vegans and cows and uh like animal rape. So, I don't know. There's a good quote that I think goes perfectly in this moment, which is, uh, it's better to be quiet and be thought a fool than open your mouth and remove all doubt, right? Yeah. So back in the day when he just like didn't say anything, right? And he was like, quiet and asshole. Right, right, right. We were right. like, oh my gosh, he must be like so, right? Yeah. So like just into the work and so smart and like mysterious and doesn't care about this bullshit. And then he opens his mouth and you're like, oh no. 
All I kept thinking. He's just ridiculous little spoiled brat. Yeah. All I kept thinking was like at the after parties, like, you know, you're walking around with your Oscar. You're you're probably like, hey, man, congrats. But in the back of your mind, you're like, what the fuck was that cow rape speech you gave? Mm -hmm. What were we doing there? Yeah. What were we thinking on that one? Again, you're right. Like thinking about it as a long, because they'll go through these speeches and and play them Mm -hmm. for years to come in montages or in connection with you or anything. So like McConaughey, you know, I just think McConaughey. Yeah, well, he always. I'm my own hero, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and you're like, by the way, but that's McConaughey. He always seizes that moment, right? (laughs) Does he ever talk right? He's classic McConaughey. Oh, he's classic McConaughey, but he is. You can tell he's just like seizing that moment and he's talking about him yeah his life his mom how he feels like him yeah, yeah, it's yeah. you yeah. right there's no need to talk about anything else like you actors are vain narcissistic people usually yeah so don't don't try and be anything else you're not fucking yeah. fooling anybody yeah. i don't i don't really understand uh and not only that but you know most of the people came in last night somebody had a uh, a meme about like this chick's outfit. It was a hundred thousand dollar dress, fifty thousand dollar earrings, all this other shit. And then you're gonna lecture me about what it's like to live in the real world. Hey man, we're not really there yet. Um, right. You know. I wonder who. Yeah. Because there was a there was a bunch of people on the red carpet last night who were spewing shit, and it was just like, dude, look at what you're saying in the outfit you're wearing right now. Like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna tell real people how to live. Yeah. I skipped. The red carpet all together. I didn't watch any. I, I just I, I got the gist of it after a couple bit. people, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, this is where we're going tonight." Congratulations. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it, but and the Billie Eilish thing. I, I want to. I, I want to say why I'm done with her personally. Like, I'm I'm done with like, hey, you're at the Oscars and you're wearing your baggy fucking bullshit garbage bag again and all that stuff. Like, know where you're at. Like, that's fine at the Grammys, but you're at the Oscars and you're the only one in a sea of people wearing yeah. dresses and it's a black tie event. It's just, um, there's certain events that it's disrespectful not to dress up, right? Like, there's just certain things in life and she will understand that when she's older that... But her parents should know. You don't... Well, I don't know how much control her parents have over her, to be completely honest. But uh, she'll definitely learn that and I think she'll feel... Maybe she'll feel mortified. I have no idea. I don't think she'll make it past four to five years. Yeah, maybe not. Popular. Um, um, I, don't, yes. I, I don't think she's that great of a singer. No, and um, I think it's like it's a classic, like I said, like Tiffany Haddish, where she's just too much, too many places. Like they're just yeah. plugging her in and ruining it, and they're like killing the puppy, right? Yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. let her be this weird, cool person, but they can't. They they cannot like talk about boomers like they cannot fucking just let it be cool. No. Who had the idea? Like someone was trying to pander so hard to millennials. Let's have Billie Eilish. You know who's hot right now, guys? Billie Eilish. Bring her on. Right, right. Just like, you know what I mean? Like that was the wrong move for whoever was trying to be cool. Yeah. I... And you're fucking ruining it. She is 17. She doesn't fucking know not to go to every fucking thing. She doesn't know that. You're supposed to fucking know that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, don't have her go to every single thing. People will start to hate her. The, well, the, and the other thing, too, is she's got a new album coming out next month. Yeah. And if it bombs, she's fucked because now she's overexposed. And then you have a bad album on exactly. top of it. Like, so it's like, just, you know. They're not setting her up for success. No. So, uh, congratulations to Boone, you know, but uh, Bong. Bing Bong? Yeah, Bing Bong Jong. Bing Bong Jong Hong. Um, yeah, whatever his name is. I think is what his name is. Uh, I, I no. watched, by and the way, look, the reason why we're making fun of it, about 800 people mispronounced it last night, so. Right, and who, like. Who knows? And look, I have, to, I have to say, the only other movie I've seen of his is Okja, and I thought it was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And I thought whoever fucking directed this movie, made this movie, is a genius. So I'm not taking anything like that away from him. It's just, and that was a foreign language film as well. Yep. So, so, but my, my whole thing with this, if you're going to have a best foreign language film and then a best film, oh, maybe there was people that spoke English. Right? Yeah. Take away the, take away the foreign films altogether and just, and just do best film and just do best, best film in the film world in the world, which yeah. is 
fucking crazy to think about that being possibly a category. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? If we just have one category that's like, how many films would have to be in it? Like, different regions, you know, like, have completely different styles of film and... Yeah, right? I, I, I don't know. Talk and then what's, and what's, the, what's the process for that? Because, you, you know, you've got to be in theaters, a certain amount of theaters and all this other stuff. And, like, I, I don't know. Um, to me, if they wanted to be the Oscars themselves, wanted to be hipper and cooler, like, I, take Dolomite. My name is Dolomite. Love that movie. I thought I Eddie Murphy should have been nominated. He should have been. Um, that movie should have been nominated. That I, I enjoy the shit out of that movie. Like, say, yeah. Um, if you're going to have, you're going to open it up because they, you know, you can go up to like 12, right? Put some fun films in there that are like, all right, great. Put some fun people in these categories, spice it up. Um, but there wasn't all the way around. Put some and, comedies uh, in there. Like, uh, comedies are dead. They don't make comedies anymore. I know. I'm just saying, like, uh, yeah. It just so, kind of felt like the end where last night was the first time you know, starring in movies and being in movies all these years. I didn't care anymore. Yeah. Um, which is strange because, it, you know, it used to be this big event and now it's just like, I don't really care anymore. I skipped the SAG Awards this year. I didn't watch them. Um, I know. Usually I watch all of them. I, I watched, I watched the, the Golden Globes because of yeah. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, and I knew that would be fun. And it was. Yeah. Uh Independent Spirit, I usually watch that. Yeah, it didn't. Just because I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you had a, a, you had a film, film that was nominated. nominated. Yeah. Oh, like no big deal. But, um, <laughs> but I could do it too sometimes. Um, yeah, you can. <laughs> but, but, and that's um, a, anyway, that's a great, but then that but that's, sort of went down too, where now the films that are getting nominated in Independent are big budget Spirit are movies. big budget, same movies. Like, I'm sure Marriage Story was in there. I'm not like, I don't even know, but I'm sure it was. Yeah. Right? I I, I bet I you. To look, you know. No, uh, yes, look, because Laura Dern was in there. She was there. So, you know, and then it all blends together and it's all the same films. So across the board, even independent spirit, it's all going to be the same films. That sucks. Yeah. Right? Mhm. So I don't know. So I've kind of just slowly like award shows in general. I just have slowly gone down for me where it's like I'm good man on the speeches and all the shit um it just seems out of touch in today's world yeah sadly uh let's get to the sponsors shall we james mean you just keep we just keep giving speeches we well don't, don't get me sponsors. started we don't thank them sponsors don't get me started on talking shit about an award show because i can go for an hour exactly. straight exactly uh first and foremost ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is the easiest one to do in the business now for me. 25% off everything in the store. Everything. And we know you won't be disappointed with both customer service and product. Yes. Like there's not a chance. No, you're good to go. We haven't heard ever one thing and pretty much like a big percentage of the drinking bros have ghost beds. And on the landing page, they have all drinking bros testimonials. Yeah. None bad. So that way you know that it's our audience you're listening to uh, who's reviewing it. So you're not, you know, listening to somebody else on there saying, I'm, I'm and Karen anyone, from Delaware and I don't know what the fuck's going on. If anyone's going to be honest about a product. Ugh, it's, it's, it's Drinking Bros. It's Drinking Bros. Drinking Bros. <laughs> Ross Patterson Revolution fans, Drinking Broettes, you name it. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. That is 25% of everything. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, you name it. Uh, it is 25% off. And as always, the pay as you go program, 36 month, no interest is, uh, is still applicable. I mean, I can't, I can't believe it's like, I literally can't believe it. The it's gotta be like $22 or something, right? To pay as you go. Yeah. With the, with 25% with off. 25% the off. Probably. It's fucking Isn't that crazy. Fucking crazy. That's but like, hey, a, everybody like wins for HBO now or Netflix these days. Amazing. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Uh, Strikeforce Energy is the premier energy drink in the biz. You were drinking it last night. I was. Uh, which we're going to get to after this. We're going to get to the sponsors. Glasses. It's either glasses or lashes with me, and I yeah. went glasses today. I like glasses. Thanks. I like glasses. Um, they were giving out lashes in the Oscar bags last night. 
Lashes? Yes. Super expensive. Like, I don't know what they were. You would know what they were probably, but yeah, they were in the back. And then so was like a stay in like Waikiki. It was just like, could you imagine Joaquin Phoenix just saying, yeah, I've got a voucher for Waikiki. Like oh, the- I saw that too. People were talking <laughs> about that. Like who is going to actually cash in on that? Brad Pitt. Can you imagine? Yeah. Hey guys, I got this voucher to stay hey for free guys. here at your Marriott Courtyard in Waikiki. What? But he- what? he goes through the whole thing, just like a Karen. You go through the whole dinner and then you present it at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And you're like, you're like, fuck. I should... Man, Brad Pitt just Brad gave me Pitt. a gift card for. I know. Strange. A coupon. <laughs> he just gave me a group for lobster. Yeah. What the fuck? Weird. Uh, Strike Force Energy. Four amazing flavors: grape, orange, orange, lemon. Oh. Uh, yeah. Very. Oh, very, very foreign. Um, no carbs. No sugars. Goes great in the white clouds, which uh, there was a lot of those going around last night um, at our event. And uh, no carbs, no sugars, no gluten for the ladies. Uh, StrikeforceEnergy.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Subscribe. I get, we give a 40-pack that's just sent to our house every month. We've been on it for like four years. Last but not least, StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right, kids? There it is, James. How appropriate. It's gone. If you're watching the video show on YouTube, you'll know a mustache is gone now. It's all over. I was talking about Bing Bong Jung. Oh, you were? (laughs) Well, I was just saying it's appropriate. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, mustache is gone now. It's all over. I like it both, though, which I've said before. Yeah. I had it for... Like, I will lie to my friends because they hate mustaches. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, I know, gross. But yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, I, a, look, I'm I, a chameleon. I have it for about two months out of every year. Uh, it ran its course for two months, and that's it. That's it. So is that so? That is what it is every year. So two, about two months, months, two three okay. months. Yeah. And Dep- then you depending what? upon what's going on, meeting wise, and all that other stuff. You're just over it after that. Uh, it, well, no. I mean, look, if it was real life, let's say I was retired. Yeah. Fuck, I'd probably have it forever if you dug it. Um, yeah. But uh, in real life, it usually comes down to like meetings and shit where it's like, all right, this is coming up or this is coming up. And the joke or not joke is is lost on people when you have a mustache where it's just like, hey, man, is this. Are you being serious? Yeah. Is this like a fun thing or is this. Uh, um, um, I will say with the beard oil and mustache wax, it's bearable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For your partner. So yeah. like that's not ever a factor. It's just really just how it looks. Yeah. I think if you don't take care of it, like if you don't use straight razors and stuff, uh, well, the products, mm-hmm. I think that's when girls are like, oh, like it sticks straight out. And it's like, right? If you tame yeah. it and take care yeah, of it. If you tame it and take care of it, you're good to go. Um, they got everything for that. It's uh, straightrazors.com. Best straight razors in the biz, too. That's what it took this bitch off with. And uh, their smolder aftershave is the finest in the land. The uh, I love it. I love all their products, man. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. No, there's some things that are coming up that were, are r- relatively serious. Um, oh. One we'll talk about right now. Um, you know, we're in the midst of uh, this election thing for the school board and, and everything oh, else, right? right? <laughs> and I have a meeting with them again. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook closely or whatever, um, you kind of know. But I'll tell you now, um, our district is going through some awful, awful shit. Um, the middle school a teacher just got arrested for touching kids. and The middle school that we got switched to. To. Um, yeah. And it's look. It, so that's it's, a fun thing to add to the whole situation. It's one of the higher ranked middle schools in the area, and that's in there. Um, and that, now this just happened. He's on seven hundred fifty thousand dollar bond right now, which I'm surprised there is a bond um, at all for this fucking guy. But uh, with that being said, another one. What, what was it? Six months ago? Seven months ago? Another middle school teacher got arrested, um, and he. Went through the trial. So he's in jail for 26 years. Okay. um, 18 to 26 years based on behavior and all this other shit. Is this the same middle school? No, different one. Oh, okay. Different one, but in our our county. Got it. And um, there was a third one back in the day before before that, like five or 10 years ago. Um, Parents are understandably 
angry. They stormed the school board meeting and uh, protested signs, the whole thing, demanded that the entire school board be fired and all the superintendents uh, be fired. Uh, as of this morning, the head of HR resigned for the New Hanover County School Board. Okay. The assistant superintendent uh, resigned. And now the superintendent has resigned. But there's a, a catch in this. It wasn't, the, the school board could have fired him. Mm -hmm. They did not. They let him resign, which means that he'll get $50,000 <laughs> um, in, in severance. And, uh, and his salary now for the year is $226,000. Which is a lot of fucking money. I didn't know. I didn't know superintendents made that much money. Right. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not sure legally what is going to happen with this and these people. Um, the problem with it is, is this is there's going to be another trial now. Um, it's going to last several years, all, as all of these do. Um, coming in as a new member of the school board. You'll have to be involved in something like that legally, along with the civil suits that are going to happen from the, the parents of these children. And, and look, they deserve every goddamn dollar they're asking for. Oh, so yeah. um, whatever it's going to be, we have a meeting with them scheduled to see legally what we would be involved with, what would have to talk about, not have to talk about. And also if we want to be associated with this, um, because it, I don't know that parents are going to know when this trial starts in a year. That, oh, well, that happened before I got here, that type of thing. Like, um, there was also a, there's a law in North Carolina that says if you're on the school board, you are protected legally against these provisions. You don't have to testify. You don't have to give up your records. You don't mm. have to do anything, right? Mm. They're looking into, and I, apparently they're very close to overturning this and forcing all these people to testify and everything else. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know if we can get involved in something like that if we win, because th then what happens? Um, do we have to testify? Do we have to, because I, I, this trial again is not going to I mean, you wouldn't have to testify. So. You might because of, of what you overhear or why you came in or why somebody left. Um, okay. You could you, like, look, being in a million of these lawsuits, like I have been, they call everybody around you, every inner party or any fucking connection. Too. I mean, the last one I was in, they called someone from 2008 in my life that had nothing to do with this in particular lawsuit, 2008. And, you know, in a strange way, it was a friend and uh, I got to catch up with him at least. He was like, hey, man, this is weird. Must be doing really well. People are suing right. me. And I was like, hey. And he goes, uh, and he goes um, yeah, man, I thought it was strange. And I was like, well, legally, you can, you can literally call anyone. Now, whether or not you can do anything without a trial is another thing. But you can go through everybody's history and go all the way back as far as you want. It's, I mean, mm. you know. So I'm not sure what that is. But we have to find out, Dan and I. And uh, we'll keep you updated as this, this goes on. I posted something about it two days ago and I just said, I know it's hard to believe this is going on in your own community. Um, very strange. And again, cause we live in a very small town. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I, I shaved for this meeting because look, the last thing you want is, uh, to walk in and talk with, with members of the district, um, from the elections board about a pedophile with a mustache. Sure. Um, but, you know, take the stigma away. <laughs> right? I've heard that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> is uh, face things head on like that. Right? Show up in your van. Because it's okay to have vans. Oh, like you, It's not like you should not be allowed to have a van. Show up in the van. Show up with the mustache, right? <sighs> Show up with the random kid that isn't yours. A nephew, maybe, that you're very close with. Oh, fuck. Show up with a top hat. James. <laughs> that you have them reach into on your lap. A magician's Do you know what I mean? Hat? Yeah, but it's an actual one. There's no hole. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. take the stigma away. <laughs> there's an actual rabbit in there. It, there's an actual Not rabbit. And you're penis. like, oh, but yeah. why'd you put it on your lap? You know what I mean? Oh, it was just I was sitting down. You know what I mean? Just take all of that away sure, and face sure. it head on. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and then we'll just move oh, on from that. Could you imagine me walking in like that? Yeah. Oh, so. but then there's like nothing in your record whatsoever, and like. Ugh, boy. I I will. Either way, mustache is gone. We won't get into that. Um, mustache is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you gonna say? There's just a whole. There's just a whole box of of stuff we can get into on on another show where it's a mess, man. It's a mess, but it's also just like there are so many people that fuck with kids. Yeah, so many. I, you know what? And when I posted that, that that was everybody who reached out was saying She's that very. And like, dude, I heard from friends. Some you know, Summer hit me up, and uh, she was like, "Hey, man, like I saw your post." And here's the weird thing about it was I I think parents are afraid to post about this type of shit. I'm not because I want everybody to know that it's real and like, hey, man, there's mm. pedophiles out there. Don't hide it it's just because it happened in your community or whatever the fuck. Well, I mean, with whatever this fuck, person but. in particular, he did not go to trial yet. You know. He will. He will, but you can't convict him before that happens, right? I guess. I mean, look, we you, rail against it was this so many, all the time it was so where many they're children. guilty in public opinion. I understand. Until the fucking but there, thing, was, there so. were so many children to put a bond at 750 is is a big boy number. Uh, again, I'm surprised there is a bond. There had to have been some probable cause to set a bond that high. I get it. So that, that's all. I'm, For sure. Whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, a bunch of people reached out and they were like, man. This happened to like my neighbor four doors yeah. down or, or whatever. And I was like, oh, shit. But everybody's afraid to talk about it. And, um, you know, I, I kind of want to just inform you of what's going on here of like, man, behind the scenes, we've Dan and I have known kind of what we're following this. And it's just like, oh, oh, my God. Like, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, I don't we have to find out legally what all this means. But uh, sure. yeah, um, I want to say real quick. Not to piggyback on that sure. at all. Sure. Actually, completely opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say at the Independent Spirit Awards, really quick. <laughs> just you're really on, quick. You've been on fire today, James. What? Yeah, yeah, no, God. Just really quick. Yeah. Sorry. No, you've been on fire. Um, I'm just saying that, like, they nominated, like, Hustlers and Book Smart and all the one- Uncut Gems. Oh, all those the ones like that they wouldn't. 15 to $30 million movies. Correct. But it it looks like it's turning into the snub awards. Maybe right? Yeah, I heard Adam Sandler won. Well, good. And they gave him a, he gave a he speech. should win. Booksmart won. I mean, I I don't really want to talk about it because I haven't seen it. But yeah, Uncut Gems won for best director, which is female director. Mm. Farewell won, which I heard was really good. Renee Renee Zellweger still won. It's like really uh, again. I've checked really? out of that award show. I've okay. checked out of, of, of all of them. Also, uh, in, in the In Memoriam, they left out uh, Luke Perry last night. That's right. What? Um, he starred in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like It was hit one of his last movies. Roles. It was his last movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like, go back and watch Eight Seconds, how does bitch. that? How does that happen? It's any actor. I don't know, man. Do you I know what I mean? Like, who were they consulting with that, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I, that it's somebody who that would big. let them forget? Yeah, I mean, someone has to be when someone dies. Like, there has to be someone in the academy that makes a fucking note of it, right? The other, the other person that you know, because there was two other people that that's uh, that, was it Chance Boyer, the kid that yeah. was in that Adam Sandler yeah. movie. He was out, um, or Cameron. I think Cameron. I forget his name, and I apologize. Um, I'll look him up. And then Only Sid, because... Sid Haig. Like I, I talked about Sid Haig on this show as a revolutionary figure of the day, who started in like over two hundred horror films, like. Oh, People yeah, were pissed yeah, that yeah, he was yeah, left yeah. out too, and it was just like, man, nobody's done more movies than that guy. I feel like, um, so it was uh, the whole thing was really fucking odd. Uh, but yeah, did they just have too many? Like, do you no, know what I mean? dude? There's not too many people that die. Like, like you could just make the thing shorter. Yes, it's a fu- it's a two second <laughs> fade. Like, you know, uh, Cameron Boyce. Cameron Boyce. That's it. But yeah, um, like why not? And again, not that anyone's more important than another but he was in one of the movies that was fucking nominated like, for for best picture luke perry do you know what i mean like strange can at least give that. Uh, I, I know i know you know what i think they probably wanted to do a longer segment on kirk did they yeah they wanted to show him old as shit yeah yeah, yeah. young and as they, shit they did but you know look you have a three and a half hour show so why can't 
if you're doing a show for actors about actors, like, dude, can't give him three seconds a piece. What does that put on nine seconds to your three and a half hour show? I will say him being left out, he got way more play than if he had been in it. Yeah. Still, man. I know. I'm just saying. Can't go back now. So. Just saying everyone's talking about that. Yeah. About him. Yeah, yeah. Kobe was in it. He was. He's yes. an Oscar winner, but He's yeah. an Oscar winner, but but still it was one short film. Luke Perry starred in yeah. a bunch of movies. Um, weird. Uh, your worst nightmare is happening too, by the way. I want to bring this up. The cruise ship. Um, the, the passengers are stuck on a cruise ship I with coronavirus. 147 have tested for coronavirus. And then the other ones are locked in their rooms. Mm-hmm. And Jabe's, sorry, 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 sorry. by the time they get out, because they're saying they're going to be stuck in there for another two weeks. Mm-hmm. You're looking at three and a half weeks on a cruise ship. You would lose your mind. It's docked. It's, right? It's docked, but. <laughs> Why aren't they sailing it around? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, your, that's your question? <laughs> no. Uh, here's my question. Um, I, keep seeing vi- <laughs> I keep seeing videos <laughs> from, um, from uh, either the cruise ship or any kind of, when they ever show anything about coronavirus, they're always like violently grabbing people and putting them places yes why do they have to be so violent with them because they're worried they're going to cough or exchange the virus somewhere else but why i know but why can't they just like have them walk faster i mean they're full nelson grabbing people and like putting them places yeah, yeah. very aggressive that's, that's what quarantine is they're sick i know i know and is that on is that how they handle stuff in asia <sighs> Yeah, I, I mean, look. Do you know what I mean? Like, they just seem like really manhandled and thrown around. The other and I'm, weird... I'm confused on what the symptoms are. Like, do they kind of turn into like, ra- are they rabid or something? I, so I've seen vi- <laughs> I've seen videos, and I can't confirm them, right? But I showed them to you that one night. Yeah. And I don't. I, if that's real, who fucking knows, man? Like, it looks like a movie where uh, uh, people are violently right. Shaking and all that other shit. Very twenty eight days later, but I just yeah. don't. If you're sick, I don't understand why the the harsh manhandling has to happen. I, I don't. I don't it's know. every video, but anyway. Yeah. And again, why are they not just like sailing around and like making the best of it? Because <laughs> the, the people aren't allowed out of their rooms, so yeah. So give them like a moving. And it's and it's like a. Uh, uh, like kind of like a prison where they're uh-huh. they're they get you out of your room to come and take like a half hour out on the dock, and then they put you back in there. And they said like people are going through cabin fever. Imagine being stuck in that room all day for three weeks, and you know, this is crazy. Crazy. This is crazy. And then there's and something like I cannot like think of one thing worse. Two million people that they can't account for in Wuhan that are just missing. That's like where do the fuck did those people go? Uh, if they're smart, they just fucking. The death toll worldwide is near, is near a thousand left. at this point. Yeah, yeah. But don't leave it up to people to quarantine you or take care of you. Like, go. Yeah. The death toll right now is right around a thousand worldwide. So that's crazy, dude. It, yeah. I mean, it keeps uh, ramping up. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen now. You know? Nightmare. Usually this shit just kind of blows over. But um, And what if you don't have a suite? Ah. Uh, what if you have an inner cabin? What if like, you're on the the lower an inside cabin with no view, where it's just you're look you're staring at the the wall. Do they Yikes. do room service and stuff still? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Any don't shows know going on still yeah. with the masks uh, on or something? Uh, could you imagine? They have to have something. Masks, uh, like cover bands. Is the pool out of the question? Oh yeah, definitely out of the question. Hot tub. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's all it's all gone. The you can't worst do any place of it. to be is the hot tub, right? Yeah. What do you think? That's where everything gets transmitted. Yeah. You know? They drained and bleached that hot tub for sure. I'm sure. I am fucking sure. Um, last but not least here, I wanna I wanna talk about the it was a a fashion show over the weekend. There's a couple. Yeah. With Pornhub stars. Interesting. Yeah. That now are, are por- models. Are Pornhub stars though only Porn stars because hasn't Pornhub sort of crossed no. over? Oh, okay. So the ones they're using so are, all... are porn stars. Yeah. Well, hey. 
And the the wild thing about it was I we did a show about this maybe a year ago where Kanye did a video and then had the video premiere. Um yeah, on sponsored by Pornhub, Pornhub and yeah. then at, like full on Pornhub, everybody Pornhub there. Yeah. And was like, look, it th- it's the number what two website in the world and all of these people are starting to become more famous than actual celebrities anyways, so mm-hmm. It kind of made sense when I read it. I was like, eh, yeah, yeah, sure. fuck. What are you going to hire an Instagram model or, you know, these Pornhub stars that everybody sees, like that you know, millions and millions of views. If you're trying to get people to watch your shit or uh, rate it, like, you know, hey, man, that's kind of the new the world, right? The new world, and I think more and more people are just starting to be okay with sex working as a job yeah and more and more and the, the the weird thing about it was is you and i we did a crossover show for drinking bros and drinking bro that's with a porn star yeah and like look we've interviewed a bunch of porn stars on drinking bros but they're starting to become more and more comfortable about like being professional yes. whereas like you have had porn stars on the show yeah not gonna lie that um were uh porn stars do you know what I mean? Like, that's what they were. Yeah. And they're exactly <laughs> what you thought they were going to be. They talked how they you thought. They talked about blowjobs and anal and everything. Yeah. Like, because they thought you guys wanted to hear that, right? Which they're not wrong. Yeah. But um, I think for me, that was the first time with small hands that I was like, oh, like, it is a business. And if you treat it like a business, you can make a shit ton of money, which he does. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, it's just more and more like Dan has been cool with it forever, right? Where he was like, I would fucking date porn star, stripper. Like, that's a job. Like, it's, it's a fucking job. And as long as they're professional about it, look, it's not for me. As far as like dating or sure. th- that relationship, I can't even understand it. Mm-hmm. But that's just because of the, re- you know, I'm just in a different relationship. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's becoming a lot more normal. It's it's wild to see. Where it's just wild like, oh, to right, see, cool. but like, my God, dude, you can make so much money if you aren't a fucking cracked out dumb bitch about it. You can fucking yeah, you can the shit out of it. kill. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, good for her. Yeah. <laughs> I say good for them. I mean, it's, uh, it's, but that's one, it's one crazy. of those things, yeah, where it's like, you know, because amateurs and all that shit, they're making yeah. the most and they're doing right. it from home. Right. And, um, you know, they have like weird storylines and shit like that where I think maybe some of them the get days, pregnant yeah. and then they keep doing it and you're like, oh, and you can oh, follow that path. Oh, but that's been like since the dawn of time. No, no, no. But oh, you with, go, with you the, go the people, the, the home, because you can, you can monetize it now on, on Pornhub as uh-huh. an amateur from your house, right? And you're just, you're just having uploading sex it like with the YouTube. same people and just uploading Yeah, you're, like a husband, a husband. Man, uh, husband and wife. And then you follow their journey and you're like, oh, okay, great. So See, I guess that's the kind of out. nice too, that you don't have to like be on a different porn set, having sex with a different person all the yeah. time if you don't want to. Yeah. You could be solo. Yeah. Make a shit time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could only do pictures. You can only do feet stuff. Cake farting. Balloon popping. Yes. I mean, sky's the limit. It really is. And good for them. Yeah. No. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, it was a, I will say it was like a strange feeling that when he was talking about it being so professional, I was like, this is weird. It is really awkward. But, but it's, that's but the world now. But then once you think about it, you're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit. That's what you, you make do. Make a lot of fucking money doing you do it, and as long if your partner's cool with it, dang, you're gonna kill it. You are gonna kill it. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, Jabes. We shall. You know who we're giving this to? You have to. You have to give it to the bonger. Do we? We do. We've given him enough. Wow. Well, I'll tell you why. That is so. Th- that is the first, very first in the history of it- of the Oscars. Um, Parasite is the very first foreign, completely 100% foreign film to win Best Picture at the Oscars. It is a massive turning point. I don't know what you're going to do now because then you've got to open it up to Do you think everything. we'll have a hashtag in our lifetime, Oscars so Asian, but there's like no white performers nominated? Well, let's fa- like, I, if I'm being real about it, 
some of the very best directors in the world are out of Asia. And it's true. We just don't, we don't know it until they actually come over here. But I mean, if you dig back. And fashion and technology and all kinds but of you stuff. Go back in time, <laughs> but you go back in time to like um, Hidden Tiger, you know, or Crouching Tiger, Hidden whatever. Hidden Bing Bong, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They've had great directors for a long time. You go back to, you know, the old old school kung fu movies and stuff with Bruce Lee and those guys. Like the way that they directed action back then yeah. was better than any American. It's true. Filmmaker as far as action goes. They've always been ahead of a lot of things. I'll I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, and with that guy's Okja movie, Japan and Korea for sure. When we but saw yeah. Okja, I was like, Jesus Christ, what is this? Who did this? I know, and, and that's s- the only reason that I'm like, I'm not so surprised right yeah because there's a lot of people that haven't seen parasite sorry unfortunately like we haven't either but i did well, it's, a, it's see a hard pill to movie. swallow to say hey yeah. man you're gonna watch a foreign film that's all on subtitles yeah and but i will say from seeing his other work like i fucking loved it and i thought he was brilliant yeah so there's no way that this movie isn't brilliant that's not what we're saying so if you're giving it to him for that like and crossing over and being that fucking good. Yeah. Okay. But now you got to open the doors up to, to everybody around the world, I feel. And then what, what are the rules for that? So we'll see. Really, really interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that to me, that was the final nail for Hollywood. Like Asia is completely taking over Hollywood. So uh, good luck with that. And if you're on the flip side, if you're an Asian filmmaker, right, and you're seeing that, um, I know China itself they're starting to let in less and less American movies because they have their own yeah. great filmmakers there that they're just like, bro, I'm, we're starting to not have a need for that now. Yeah. Um, does this even explode that kind of genre? Even, I mean, even more over there of foreign see. films, the genre of foreign films of like, hey man, we're great. We can have our own awards and, and all of that shit and we don't need American movies so much anymore. Uh, either way, man, uh, times they are a changing. They already own half the studios. So, yeah. um, it, the waters it, are rising around us. Yeah. They're around us, they're rising. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> high tide? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, it's high a tide, Bob Dylan thing. High tide travels no ships. Yep. That's what they always say. Everyone. Everyone. Um, and then to cap it off, Jabes, you finished... Third place in the rib off. <laughs> and how many people were in it? F- four. Four people. Four. So. Four. I wanted to save that to the end and just kind of yeah, slide it in. People yeah, were asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but listen. All four ribs were fantastic, including your own. It was a, it was it was a, a totally really blind tough, tasting, so yeah. there were no favorites based on like looks and personality because that's usually how I win. Mm-hmm. This one was just cooking. So we really got the answer on that uh, of, of what the real deal is. But no, I mean, I'm going to keep working at it, right? And keep perfecting it. And like, it's an annual thing now in our neighborhood, which is so great. And it was really so much fun. It was awesome. There was a trophy. And I felt like, here's the thing. Like, I was the only girl. Um, it was an uh, honor just to be nominated. But like, I was the only girl in there. Yeah. Right? And I think I held held up pretty well against like experienced smokers, right? Yeah, look, you were great. Here's the thing with with this: I've never been in a food competition tasting wise where I was just like usually like the chili cook off. I thought there was like maybe four good chilies out of the fifteen or whatever it was. Same with when we had it here at the office, right? Um, right. Now with these ribs, they're so hard to make. the The rib competitions I have been in. Mm-hmm half of them are garbage just because they're tough or whatever. And it's just like, eh. yeah, this one was tough because all of them were good, but the, there was just a different seasoning on all of them. And all four of them were unique that it was just like, man, it really kind of comes down to what seasoning you like the most or your rub or well, whatever. So, yeah. And then there was like one judge that was doing, um, like regulation judging, which is the ribs are actually not supposed to fall off the bone in a real competition they're supposed to be like tender enough that you can like get them off easy Mm -hmm. but they're not supposed to fall off at all so there was people that were doing like regulation then there was people that was just on taste and there was people that didn't really know anything and were just like oh that was the best one um there's a spicy one 
Yes, you which, know, which was my favorite, but only because I like, one, I like spicier whatever. So, stuff. And it's... but I felt like I felt good that it wasn't like a glaring last place. You know what I mean? No, it was very very close. So all of the people came within like and five points good. of each other. Yeah, you were great. The ribs were great. I feel like fat M and M today because I ate. We ate I went so back much. and I brought my tray back. So it's at the house. Yeah, oh boy, they're so good. Um, because I went back and, and retasted them again. Sure, you got to. Well, here's why. You didn't have to go back four we times. We weren't judges. Yeah. We weren't allowed to be judges, but everybody. Well, everybody had the same comment of like, you know, with the spices, it depends on what order you ate them in. So we all went back and did it in reverse order, and then we all came back with different numbers again, where it was just like, oh well, shit. If I had that one at the end or this one second, like there was a reason why I chose the the ones that I chose in yeah. my mind. Obviously, I wasn't allowed to judge, but yeah, um, it was super interesting. And yeah, and I, it was very serious. And like there was like the scorecards with yeah. the points and like a trophy. It was the real deal. It was eight super hours. What fun. eight hours of smoking? Yeah, yeah. Eight hours, nine, depending on what you wanted to do. But um, yeah. Josiah in the neighborhood put it all together. It was, a, it was, awesome and it was a real trophy, and yeah, it was real awesome. trophy. It was really, it was fun because we all like throughout the day we're going to each other's houses, yeah. talking shit, like fake sabotaging, which we didn't do. Like my Wi-Fi wasn't working, and Josiah had helped me clean my grill mm-hmm. before, and I was like, that motherfucker put turned off my Wi-Fi, put it on his phone, or so, you know what I mean. I'm like, <laughs> um, which he didn't do, but that was the fun of it, and it was uh, it was really cool. It wasn't like with the chili cook-off where I felt like I really didn't do, like I didn't have the best chili. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this one, like I, th- I don't I, feel I, bad. I actually thought you had the best it. chili in that one. Actually, I don't know. I could have done better, but like I this one, I don't feel home. bad. Remember that night I had another bowl when you got home. Yeah. But that doesn't say much. <laughs> James. Joking, friend. It was good. I'm joking. It was good. No, but I feel good and I'm going to keep working on it, basically. Yeah, it was keep fun. Keep perfecting but, but it. But we, we and were going to let the year, audience know you came in third. By next year? Yeah, I didn't want there to even be a second third. I wanted there to be first and then three losers. Honestly, because that's what it is. Yeah. Like, you fucking lost. Yeah. yeah. But, Oh, well, yeah, I got my points. I can study it. I can see where I can work on next year. And um, it's all I can do, man. It's all you can do, man. It's all I can do, bro. Uh, let's close it out. i um, looking at uh, tonight is the New Hampshire primary. I know everybody's watching, keeping a close eye on this. Um, they just released their final polls for that. Biden right now is currently pulling fifth in that. I don't know how much longer he will be in the election. Um, if he finishes fifth in New Hampshire. Whew, I Super Tuesday is in three weeks, so I, he might be out after that, which is, he was the front runner this whole time, so uh, wild, wild to say. Jabes, yeah. proud of you, proud Thank of your you. ribs. Thank you. Oscars, not Thank proud you. of you, not proud of anything that went on last night. Uh, really bored, and I might have fell asleep once or twice. Soup's bored, okay. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.